you, as a network engineer, need to learn Linux. GNS3 have released an Ubuntu desktop GNS3 appliance. This Ubuntu desktop appliance has a graphical user interface. This appliance is now available thanks to the hard work of Andrush and others in the GNS3 community. Please join me in thanking Andrush and others in the GNS3 community for their hard work adding appliances to the GNS3 marketplace. Because of their hard work, our lives are made easier. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download, import, and configure an Ubuntu graphical user interface desktop appliance running on QMU on the GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm using GNS3 version 2.1 beta 1 on a Mac. The process that I'm going to demonstrate, however, is very similar to what you would do with GNS3 version 2.0 on a Windows PC. To get started, go to gns3.com, click Marketplace, Appliances, and search for Ubuntu. The Ubuntu appliance is a Docker container, but the Ubuntu appliance with graphical user interface is a virtual machine that runs on QMU on the GNS3 VM. Click Download Template to download the template to your local computer. In GNS3, go to File, Import Appliance, and select the Ubuntu Graphical User Interface Appliance, and click Open. The Add Appliance Wizard displays. We told that this is an Ubuntu virtual machine. The vendor is Canonical. The architecture is x86 64 bit, and we're going to run the virtual machine on the GNS3 VM, which means that KVM is required. That means that you need to have the GNS3 VM integrated with the GNS3 graphical user interface and have the GNS3 VM running in a VMware product. In my example, my GNS3 VM is running within VMware Fusion. If you're using Windows, you need to use VMware Workstation or VMware Player. VirtualBox doesn't support nested virtualization, which means you can't use VirtualBox with this appliance. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to run the appliance on the GNS3 VM and click Next. My server requirements are OK. Click Next. Various versions of Ubuntu are supported. 17.04, 16.10, I'm going to select 17.04 and download the VMDK file. So what you need to do is select the VMDK file and click Download. GNS3 will open up a web browser and take you to osboxes.org. You need to select the right version of a VMDK file. In my example, I'm going to use Ubuntu 17.04 as per the GNS3 wizard, and I'm going to be using VMware. So I'm going to download the 64 bit VMDK file. So click Download to download the file. In this example, it can't be opened, so click Download and download anyway to download the file to your local computer. So a VMDK file is downloaded. It's about one gig in size. So depending on how fast your internet speeds are, that may take a while to download. Now the file that's downloaded is a 7Z or 7Z file. So you'll need something like WinRAR or WinZip or equivalent software to unzip the file. So in my example, the file has been downloaded and extracted. So I have the VMDK file extracted to a 64-bit directory in my downloads directory. 
it's now available in my downloads directory. Click refresh. GNS3 will search the downloads directory for the file. If it doesn't find it, like here, click import. Browse to where the file is stored and click open. GNS3 will now upload the file to the GNS3 VM. The file is 4.79 gig in size, so it may take a while for the file to upload to the GNS3 VM. You simply need to wait for the file to upload to the GNS3 VM. So in my example, the file has been uploaded and the Ubuntu 1704 appliance is ready to be installed. I'm gonna click next. We asked, would we like to install Ubuntu 17.04, the answer is yes. QMU settings are displayed. I'm gonna use the defaults and click next. So in summary, this appliance has one network adapter, uses one gig of RAM. It uses a 64-bit architecture. Notice the console type is VNC. Various options are shown here, which will allow us to set the screen size. Notice that KVM is required, so you need to use a VMware product. Click Next. Notice the username and password used on the appliance. You probably want to copy that and store that information somewhere so you've got it if you need it later. Click Finish. The appliance is now installed. Click OK. So under End Devices, I now have an Ubuntu 17.04 virtual machine, which I can drag to the workspace. I'll add an Ethernet switch to the Genius 3 topology. This is not required. I'll also add a NAT cloud to the topology. This is also not required. I'm using this so that I can get internet access from the Ubuntu virtual machine. So I'll connect the Ubuntu virtual machine to the switch and the switch to the NAT cloud. And I'll start them up and open up a console. The Ubuntu virtual machine is available. The connection type is VNC. In this example, I'm using chicken of the VNC because I'm running on a Mac. So osboxes.org is the password. My Ubuntu desktop now displays. So as an example, I can search for terminal, open up a terminal, and hopefully I can ping google.com, which I can. I can open up a web browser, and navigate to genus3.com. And that works. So I've successfully imported an Ubuntu graphical user interface a virtual machine into Genus 3. To add another one to the topology, I would simply drag a PC to the workspace like I would with any other device in GNS3. I'll start it up and open up a console. So I now have both Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2 up and running. If you have this kind of display issue, shut a VNC down and open up the console connection again. So here we go. We'll log into Ubuntu 2. Login is successful. Open up a terminal. Ping google.com and that works. So it's as simple as that to bring Ubuntu desktop graphical user interface QMU appliances into your GNS3 topologies. 
These appliances are running on the GNS3 VM. They require nested virtualization, which means that you need to use a VMware product to host your GNS3 VM. But this makes it very easy to learn and use Ubuntu. In my Linux for Network Engineers courses, I'll be using an Ubuntu Docker container as well as these Ubuntu graphical user interface VMs for teaching Ubuntu. So this is a Docker container. The Docker container doesn't have a graphical user interface, but the Ubuntu VMs do have graphical user interfaces. The Docker container software that you install is also not persistent, but software that's installed on the Ubuntu virtual machines is persistent. So you may prefer to use an Ubuntu VM rather than a Docker container, or both, as I have in this topology. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.